We have this really interesting article courtesy of RA that I wanted to talk about because obviously it's something that kind of um, aligns with me and speaks to me and what I'm kind of going through in terms of my journey in terms of trying to become a full-time DJ or no, not even a full-time DJ. I want to become a DJ that's able to get booked and played at certain places, but I don't want to be the only thing that I do. I obviously want to do the stuff that I'm doing now. So it's not just going to be me touring the world or over the place. I want to be doing this, making my art, you know, um, doing my photography, uh, you know, doing this podcast, doing YouTube stuff. That's what I want to do. And also DJing, but it's not going to be the only thing that I do. But it's still interesting to see regardless. So this is an article courtesy of RA. It says how to make it as an artist, right? And obviously it's mostly got a kind of DJ tint to it, but there's obviously some um, actual artists who have been featured on there who actually make some music to it and want to become stars in their own right in that way. And the reason why this is interesting because it also made me think about this podcast I recently listened to with Tim Dillon, where he said something along the lines about, I forgot which one it was, maybe a page one about how um in general i, mean, I think if someone asked him about advice or something right how he feels awkward and people asking for advice because he feels like there's nothing he can say to really help them and they're also kind of robbing themselves of the journey they're robbing themselves of it by wanting to have like the secret key or the one bit of advice that's going to change everything you're kind of robbing yourself of that journey that's meant to hurt meant to be painful you're meant to go through some growing pains you're meant to learn things meant to lose friends lose money um, go through breakdowns breakthroughs before you make it and you obviously have to do that all on your own and i think you made that point about being on your own about there's nothing i can do you just have to figure it out by yourself and most people won't want to tell you because they also figure that out by themselves. So there's kind of, what's we'll a resentment, but there, there is this a sort of, um, not even a survivor's guilt. What do you call it? Resentment? I don't know what it is, but there must be something in people who are successful, who've made it. When they hear people asking them for advice, that's a bit like, why should I tell you when I had to figure it out myself sort of thing, which I can kind of get, but also makes me a bit annoyed because I feel like for whatever reason, especially in the DJ world, there is something you see quite often. You don't really see a lot of people bringing people through you don't really see a lot of djs doing what nastia did with um daria or whatever her name is right where she sort of um put her arm around her shoulder a, a, a kind of again we, we have to take what nastia said with a pinch of salt but according to what nastia said she kind of put her arm around daria's shoulder and kind of brought her through right and kind of guided her in the kind of early parts of her career which are usually the most important parts i feel like um especially if you're a dj because i feel like those early sort of like first impressions you make at those early spots that you get recommended to usually kind of set the precedent because i know for me being a promoter and even coming up in my local scene those early sets that i took seriously where i played in pubs for 10 people ended up being the opportunity that I got to then play in actual clubs because people saw me taking that shit seriously coming on time being a pleasure to deal with and then they're like hey we're going to give you this other opportunity so clearly for Nash she feels like those chances were really you know important for Darius career now in general in DJ world well, you don't really see that often you don't really see a lot of DJs who are senior or who have kind of in the industry longer who will be willing to put their arm around the shoulder of a certain artist coming up or a DJ and say hey I'm going to guide you I'm going to get you these early gigs I'm going to maybe give you gigs that I don't want to do and then kind of get opportunity to get in and kind of mentor you through your process in the early stage it doesn't really happen people kind of make it on their own or they put a track out it's not really like a it's not really like a peer thing or like a bringing you in thing or like a collective thing it's just like we're doing it on our own as a group or individually which is kind of strange but anyway and i think this and i think the reason why is because this article basically proves it because there is no clear way to make it and there is no set sort of like steps you can go through and everyone's journey is completely different and most advice people are going to give you is absolutely bullshit like it doesn't apply to anything. Like it's just a matter of just kind of putting your head down. And I'm thinking to myself in this regard, but it's just a matter of putting your head down and doing the work. Doing the work for me means obviously recording DJ mixes, um, clipping those videos online, sharing on social media, which I'm always shy to do, putting them on Instagram, making, you know, putting the mixes up online, sharing those and promoting those, I'm always shy to do. All those things that I don't do, if you do those consistently, on a yeah, on a consistent basis on a consistent basis sorry um to a high level then you may make it but there is no guarantee either but this idea that these articles actually shed any light on anything is nonsense because i read through it and it was just gobbledygook it didn't say anything it didn't really help anything it just kind of told you the journey that these people went through and how they made it but again none of this can be none of this none of this is applicable and some of it can be applicable so let's just read a couple of it right so it says, while success in the electronic music scene, this is courtesy of RA, right? This is um, how to make us an artist. While success in the music industry, sorry, music um, can mean everything from 
simply paying your rent to headlining Tomorrowland, fame has just as many faces in the industry today. To some, it looks like being in a sorry, billboards by of Peggy Goo or 150 million pop by stream of Bicep Track Glue. It also manifests as a buzz behind um, Fred Jack's label, how you pronounce their name, Spandu 20, or as fans of likes on the video of Kobolsi dressed in his own fashion label. Fame is also like the Nina on a cover of Spotify's Atelier playlist. Of the um, it's the potentially multi-billion dollar question of anyone's mind. How can you make it in 2022? While the quest of widespread recognition and acclaim feels a part of the parcel of pursuing a career in pop and hip-hop, electronic music's relationship with fame and success is more fraught and opaque, which is definitely true. This is the case not only because commercialization has been declared an enemy of the underground, but also because the roadmaps of success have been broadened over the bedroom, over the boardrooms of major labels don't necessarily apply to DJs and producers in the current landscape. It says as follows. Um, you can't just just look at the trends of the macro industry and attempt to apply those tactics to your career, said Ari Herstand, the author of bestseller How to Make It in the Music Industry. This especially is a case in 2022. For two years, COVID-19 closures and quarantine stalled our careers, but the industry continued to evolve. Now the quest of fame, be it local or national or global, is in many cases a matter of hacking the algorithm. If we think, quote unquote, blowing up as a Molotov cocktail, what is the equivalent to a bottle of fuel and a wick? A viral moment? A fruitful connections of endorsements, the right label, manager, publicist, innovative branding, luck. As is typical with the case with the challenging multiple questions, this answer is all of the above, which is definitely true. Um, one ingredient of success nowadays is the artist's footprint on major video streaming platforms. Afro Pacifica DJ Lady Shaka remembers watching in disbelief as comments of appreciation reigned in on her boiler room set. Um, which immediately after upload on YouTube. Seemingly overnight, her Instagram exploded and bookings poured in. Despite it being a remarkably memorable performance done in collaboration with a local indigenous ballroom scene, um, the DJ says that she would have never anticipated the impact. The intention was not to create a viral moment. It was just to do something for the community as, a gen community as a generally as I could. But when I saw that people from the diaspora or who are indigenous in other countries um, could relate, it changed the way that I perceived my set. Although Lady Shaka was already well established before, before. Again, they didn't point out beforehand, right? <laughs> she caught sights as the major turning point. To be honest, um, without that boiler room, my career wouldn't have been platformed as much as it is, which is interesting because a lot of um, of the snobby dance music types on Twitter and social media have a lot of negative things to say about boiler room. But I always say in general, for all the bad that they've done, boiler room have done more good than bad, especially in terms of um, you know platforming and propelling certain DJs' careers into the flipping stratosphere. Um, Many, many DJs have said, some of them through gritted teeth, that they would never have become successful as they are without that Boiler Room endorsement. And it really did go a long way to kind of changing their career. And again, stuff like Boiler Room, how do you get one? Who do you email? Do you have to wait for them to approach you? Do you approach them? Like, what approach do you go for? Like, it's all questions that people don't know and don't really get answers to. You don't necessarily hear Boiler Room coming out telling you, hey, here's how to get a DJ set on our platform. It's all kind of opaque. It's all kind of, you know, misty-eyed, whatever it may be. But clearly, we know, especially as up-and-coming DJs or people that are trying to make an industry, we know that that platform does have some pull and does have something because of the eyes that their platform, is, um, you know, gets and because of people who kind of watch it especially people in the industry who kind of want to book people because the good thing about that platform because it's so commercially minded um you would imagine if you can get people to view the things on there most of the people that are going to be watching body room are quite normy kind of punters so if you are a promoter that's kind of just going by the algorithm and going by view counts you could predominantly you could probably if you're smart enough book a pretty decent lineup and get people to actually buy tickets and come to your event and actually spend money at the bar just based on the views that people are getting so it's a great way to kind of also gauge okay who's actually got a draw who's got an audience blah -de blah 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 so clearly there's something there but again do we know how to get in there of course we don't so you just kind of figure out yourself um which is obviously okay and fine but that's the only bit that's annoying about it no one actually told you that that fact of the matter is that the truth of the matter is that in anything in life think about think about yourself when it comes to regular jobs forget DJing when was the last time genuinely right in your life in your career where somebody said to you hey I can hook you up with a job at this place and it's actually happened maybe you could maybe that someone's told you hey I could hook up with the interview I can get an introduction but when's the last time somebody said to you hey I know this person I know someone that works over there I can hook you up it's the, it never happens because it doesn't happen that way in life like most of the things you got you get in life are usually done through the sweat of your own brow right 
usually are done through your own elbow grease they're not done through somebody giving you something on a plate it never works out that way and the same thing happens with DJing but maybe because DJing is so collaborative and club music or dance music is so collaborative in terms of many people that work in there and there's so many moving parts sometimes you can you can have that idea that fanciful idea that somebody's out there looking out for you and stuff but they're not really they're not paying attention to you they're working on what they're working on and you have to maybe make yourself good enough to get their attention but again you have to do it yourself there is no bringing <laughs> sorry for the most part it doesn't really exist um they continue to actually let me see who's this person the lady sh let me i actually want to see this set this lady shaka set let me actually see if i can get up on the screen because i love to see what it actually sounded like because i guess it's the first set that they did at boiler room right um that actually kind of set them on the trajectory to become the success that they are now at the moment let's actually hear and see what this set sounded like i'm really interested so the the boiler room let's get up on the screen here okay it's okay this is definitely the first one is it the first one 10 months or one year ago okay it's definitely 10 months oh one year ago look at that look at the views i actually watched it i didn't remember so this is the, this is the set can you see that on the screen this lady shaka boiler room new zealand um filth from one year ago and it's got 187,000 views which is really good for a boiler room because especially from coming from a dj that i'm guessing is going to be playing um probably something bass type music whatever it may be and it's definitely from a niche sort of scene so to get those kind of views being that kind of person is definitely good especially in boiler room because again like i said it's full of kind of normie sort of punters let's see actually see what he actually sounds like. i forgot the sound of it let's hear this okay i'll take it back it's not bass this is i'm this is i'm a piano right nice okay you can see why this did well in it right it's a real diverse set of people everyone generally looks like they're having a good time which is usually rare for boiler room crowds because people are just stuck up and just i don't know way too aware of the cameras and whatnot they're having a good time they clearly all gone out and got dressed up and looked cute to support their friends and show out and just have a blast and clearly it's representing a whole different you know uh, group of people who I don't necessarily see get featured on Boiler Rooms, people from New Zealand. So all that stuff is absolutely amazing. So it makes sense why this would have resonated and connected with people. And again, these, these are things as a DJ you can't control. If you're not, imagine if you're not this person, if you're just like a regular white girl, right? Who lives in fucking Ilford and just wants to get involved in the scene and you just want to play your basic bitch fucking house music, which, got, which is no, there's no issue with that whatsoever. Everyone's got their thing they want to play. This is what you have to kind of compete against. You know what I mean? So it's a really interesting world. It's an really interesting world out there. It's kind of whitewashed. It's kind of full of loads of straight white dudes. But then the other end of things as well, if you are a straight white dude, you have to compete with this, which is, you know, it's hard to compete with because you've got, you know, you're, you, you're lacking in seasoning. <laughs> you don't have any sort of juice. Oh, I haven't heard um what is what the hell is this not kid? This is not this is not I'm pure. This is um oh what's it? this is Angolan music, isn't it? Is this Kizomba? Or Kuduro, right? It's Kuduro. Yeah, this is Kuduro, Kuduro. Amazing. Amazing. Okay, now I get why I get why this did well. I guess the why I did well. I guess why this did well. I get it. But anyway, that's 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 the thing. Let's go back to the article before I kind of get too engrossed in this one. Um, it continues on. Da, 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 da. Da. Let's create a viral moment. That's obviously the DJ there, Lady Shaka. So big up her. It continues. Um, just the day before a phone call. Yeah, this is a good one too because I feel like this DJ called FKA M4A, somebody that I kind of got only hip to, um, courtesy of the platform called Whore, right? Which is this one, right? Let's actually put the, the name on here. F four A. Was it FKA? Is it FKA? M four A. Is that it? Yeah. That's somebody I only got familiar with by watching their sets on flipping the whole Berlin, right? Absolutely smashed loads of these, as you can see. Some of them red I've actually checked out over the years and stuff. And again, only found this person out via the platform of watching them play on flipping um, this online radio station. As you can see, some of the first appearances they had on there two years ago, 8.8 .8 views. And a year later, 8.18, another 8.8. .8. Uh, seven point nine, eight point four, nine point three, fifteen point take fifteen k. Like clearly an uptick in kind of the you know the response, and then of course on boiler and thirty seven thousand, it's kind of gone from strength to strength. And I think he definitely played that 
Bergheim recently too so definitely this is definitely worked out for them it continues to say it so it's the courtesy of the article it says just the day before our phone call DJ FKA M4A was flown in a small private jet from one festival to another imagine how great that must feel I've gone on so many gigs where I've had to pay for my own transport pay for my own accommodation uh, pay for my own food <laughs> right so imagine going from playing you know like that and then going somehow you're now playing you're now flipping jumping on private jets again it's only domestic but still that's going to feel flipping swaggy and um, from one festival in Germany to another a courtesy that the second festival extended to ensure the artist who goes by the pronouns they them could still play the f the, uh, the first I thought that kind of stuff only happened with headliners they said when reflecting on their surreal where in the weekend FKA or the, the began playing military music at the end of 2000 oh, see, this is the thing that's annoying I've been DJing since fucking what is it it's been 10 years now. What, what was the first time I played? Was it 2015 or like 2013 or something? <laughs> anyway, let's continue. No one's journey is the same, but anyway, let's continue. Although it might sound in, 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 in a pro, sorry, in opportune timing for FKA and for A, COVID-19 was helpful uh, rather than hurtful, which I definitely agree with because they were able to just get straight onto the live streaming trend where I was kind of being shy and I was being too flipping, um, you know, just ridiculous redacted when it comes to that sort of stuff i didn't want to put myself out there i'm kind of from the school where you don't show your stuff or you just kind of do your thing on the sly or on the on the cover without no one knowing but in this era you got to show and prove you have to show your thing you have to show people what you do and obviously if you kind of jumped into djing at 2019 and covid started in the 2019 you're just going straight into live streaming you don't see any problem with it you're native to live streaming it's okay to put your video up online it's okay to share your clips online and to share your mixes it makes complete sense so De definitely again an illustration of what stuff that I've kind of missed out and I didn't do right so it continues um, I'm a child of a generation of whore says they said referring to the Berlin radio station that became uh, a celebrity in its own right during the pandemic when FKM 4A was invited to play the set in honour of whore's first birthday party in 2020 they came prepared it's intimidating to play in front of a camera so I brought two of the most energetic creative cancers I know that to, to take attention off of me by the end of the set the walls are dripping with sweat okay let's see so that was the first set that they did this one with the two friends is it this where is it with the two friends where is it us oh, i missed it i missed it is it this one with the two friends is that with the pink bandana on or is it a white bandana it's a white bandana isn't it? where is it was it this set i don't know which one is this oh this is the one this okay this is the first that it did it's got forty thousand views god damn it whole one year anniversary so let's see let's get a picture there to start off with Looks cool though, doesn't it? Right? Two of the friends in the background. Um, great uh, sleeveless Nike tank top with the LGBTQ flag on it. Headband looking cool. The nipples bursting out from the side. You know, starving for some fresh air and some air conditioning and some attention. It definitely looks good. Yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it, I get it. That was good, that was good, that was good. Let's go back to the article. Um, da, 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 da. They came prepared, intimidating. By the end of it, was, the walls were sweating. As Hall's visibility con continued to skyrocket, so did the visibility of gay for vivacious set, sorry. That Pacific showcase is how my agency found me. Two months later, FK4 was booked at Panorama Bar. Oh my God. <laughs> Lord, let that, why can't this be me? Honestly. Imagine doing a live set on a flipping YouTube channel and then two months later you get booked at Panorama Bar. Are you absolutely kidding me? But also what that goes to show, which is why I love the Bergheim, which I keep talking about it again and again. Clearly, there's people who book at the Bergheim who are very open-minded because I feel like it, it wasn't obviously Bergheim watching his set and booking him. It was clearly him getting signed to his agency and then some of these agency being like, hey, this guy would fit what you guys are doing. And then them being open and not thinking, oh, he's only started DJ a couple of years ago. Why am I going to get him involved? They're really open to seeing it, which is the opposite here in the UK. I feel, like. I feel like UK people are a little bit more stingy, a little bit more clicky with how they bring it. I wouldn't expect them to do the same thing with somebody in the UK. You'd have to really struggle and graft to get the opportunity. Whereas there, they seemed a bit more open-minded. Like, as long as it's coming from a recommendation from a friend of this agency, they're willing to kind of give it a chance. But, oh, what an amazing story. It continues. They accredited much of their success and almost a tremendous amount of it to gratitude to their team of incredible 
Marvel agents. They're making everything I dream of reality happen, and it all comes down to those live streams. Just over a year after having the whole birthday set, FK more M4A open Instagram to see a DM from Peggy Goo, incredible, who invited them to play at their release party and who opened for her in Mannerheim. Um, she has become a mentor and a dear friend. I call her mama, they said, which is interesting because I was sure this kind of person would want to shit on someone like a Peggy Goo after, but then suddenly when she's DMing you saying she wants to work with you, suddenly she becomes your mom and your friend. I get it, I get it. But in general, I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's going to be boring if you don't care about this sort of stuff, but I'll put the link in the show description. In the end, in conclusion, what this told me and what this taught me and what this showed to me was that there is no one way to make it. I knew that already. There is no reason, no, there is no point of asking for help. I knew that already because I'm somebody that doesn't never ask anyone for help. I always do things on my own. I've nearly got 600 episodes of a podcast here because I hate asking people for interviews because I feel like people end up big timing you. I feel like, you know, I don't know. I just, I just want to do stuff on my own. I end up never following through with the interview, all that kind of good stuff because why not? Um, but in general, in general, you really need to learn your lessons on your own. You need to kind of go through this kind of rocky creative artistic path on your own figure out your mistakes figure out the things that you're doing right learn from your mistakes all this sort of bad stuff all this sort of good stuff and finally maybe in the end you might get there and maybe you might not that's the absolutely brutal part of it also but I feel like for me because I love this thing as much you know as anyone uh, as more as anybody what am I not talking properly but you know what I mean right I love this shit for real I'm not actually bothered about the whole like oh you have to make it at a certain time I don't really give a shit if this happens when in 10 5 years I don't care the fact that I'm able to do the thing that I love and if you know that I would do for free anyway and someone would pay me for it would be absolutely amazing but it's quite reassuring to read these articles because generally what it kind of proves to me is that the sort of roadblocks I've been running into are obviously mostly self-inflicted because again I'm not doing the things I need to be doing in terms of recording mixes I'm doing radio shows uh, plugging myself online just being a bit more of a general presence out there because I don't feel like if you actually if you unless you actually look deeply into what I do you wouldn't know that I DJ do either so I get I have to be more kind of front-facing and in general just kind of putting yourself out there and just hoping that it happens but it doesn't have to happen the way these things can happen it could happen anywhere um but it's also nice to know that the struggle is real across the board that's also good to know right the struggle is real across the board sometimes you can be getting absolutely air on road and then suddenly you do one thing and it can completely blow you up and take you to the next stratosphere but it is obviously important just to kind of focus on what you do and kind of hone in on that craft but these articles just end up kind of if you're not kind of strong-minded you can end up sometimes be a bit disgruntled with these articles because you read that sentence or that kind of account for that kid that said he's died in 2019 and now he's getting booked at flipping but kind of a couple of years later like oh fucking hell what have i gone wrong mate where have i absolutely gone wrong but in general doesn't matter everyone's got their journey um big up to everybody who's featured on the article and hopefully soon in my own journey i can maybe somehow make it to those kind of lofty you know places and even further when i finally end up getting my chance in it that's the goal that is the goal